So I wanted to do a video for you guys on box design. I found, I, I thought like after the video uh, yesterday on Sound Advice, I figured, you know what, there, I think there's some things that people just don't know about box design that maybe I should go over and where I see most people messing up. Uh, what I have here is I have a Cartesian ported. I have a closed driver. It's a different driver. I'm not sure. Oh, I think I used the MX-15 and I used a Cartesian sub with passive radiator. So um, we're going to start with Cartesian ported. Uh, once you enter this in, uh, it's going to show you the box size, which this box size only needs to be a 0 0.079. Now you can obviously change that. You can change your tuning frequency, all that you can change. We're not really concerned about that. I'm going to assume that you know uh, what you're doing there. Uh, you can change your port size. Once again, we're not worried about that just yet. First thing you do want to do is put your system input power which is 50 watts. Because here's the deal, when I'm designing a box, there's a couple things I wanna think about. First thing I wanna think about is location. Where do I expect this box to be? Do I expect this box to like fill up a room or do I expect this box to be like a near field? Now, with a Cartesian four inch sub, we're gonna assume that it's gonna be near field. I don't think very many people are gonna think a four inch subwoofer is going to fill up a room. And if you are, um, you're gonna be mistaken because it's just not gonna be able to do that. Now, the other thing that we want to think about is uh, how much power we're going to be giving it. That's what we're going to put in the system input power. And then finally, how loud do we want it to go? Um, and of course, you know, how uh, far down in the frequency do we want it to go? You know, what is it, what are we using it for? Are we using it for music? Are we using it for movies? You know, what is our end goal here? So if, for example, I want this to go down to 20 hertz, um, this particular alignment that I've chosen wouldn't be good for this driver. I'd probably want to do an extended bass shelf with this driver. And to do that, you would just create a new one and we'd go over to uh, Cartesian Acoustic, we'd hit sub 120, we'd go one driver, and then we'd go extended base shelf, um, which we're gonna hit vented, and then we're gonna hit extended base shelf. We probably do negative six decibels because negative three is probably not going to get where we want it to. And there you go, you're closer to your negative six is uh, around 30 hertz. That's about as good as you're gonna do. Now, you're probably saying, well, that's really far down. Would I wanna do that? The answer is maybe. I mean, you'd probably EQ this down. You'd also wanna see how your room reacts with it because your room's gonna react probably with these lower frequencies more. Um, and that might be a good way. It might actually be giving you a good base boost in that region where you don't have to worry about it as much. It's hard to say, you know, without putting it in there. Uh, and worst case scenario is you can EQ this down. Now, that does mean that's going to be about six decibels. If, if you EQ all this down flat, it's going to be six decibels you know, less than this one. So, you know, that's what you want to think about when you want to design this. So one of the subwoofers I did design with an extended base shelf, I did do a negative three decibels, uh, was that subwoofer end table. And that's because uh, I used a PA subwoofer, and a PA subwoofer really doesn't get down low. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that, but in order to get it down low, you have to do an extended base shelf. So here's the Cartesian ported. Now, after we figure out where we wanna put it, we're gonna figure out you know, about how far we think we're gonna be. So with a near field, the listening space is about three feet. And that's a good thing because when we go to SPL, this SPL over here, which is what we're gonna check on next, is going to tell us the SPL based on the listening distance. Now this is an anechoic measurement, so keep that in mind. This is not gonna take into account any room gain or anything else you're getting. This would be like worst case scenario. This is the SPL you're gonna get. You're gonna get more when you put it in a room. Now, having said that, you wanna look to see if this meets your criteria. In this particular case, uh, this says it's gonna get to about 99 decibels, three feet away using 50 watts of power that should be plenty fine enough. However, you're gonna to wanna to go to your advanced tab and you're gonna to to click this, SPL graph is X max limited. This is what your graph is gonna look like when you first poured it in. When you put that SPL is X max limited, this is gonna show you uh, if you have issues uh, giving it too much power in that particular box that you've designed. And if you have, then you need to change your box or your porting tuning frequency. So for example, if I wanted to give this 100 watts of power, and we look at it now, we see this dip here. Why is that dip here? Well, that's because we're going past cone excursion, we're passing our X max, and this can't uh, play that um, well enough. Uh, it can't, it's, it's passing excursion. And the way that we can easily tell that is we can go to cone excursion. Once again, you see this is the inverted graph of what we just saw because this is where we've passed cone excursion. 
Once again, when we put that back down to 50 watts, we now see that it's good again. That's very important to note because a lot of times when you uh, put a subwoofer in here and you use the RMS value, uh, it, it would not be surprising to see it actually go past X max with the box that you have designed in the first place. So you need to check cone excursion. It's one of the first things you need to check cone excursion and SPL SPL graph. You want to make X max limited so that you can see if it is an issue or not. Um, it, and that's just going to be standard with any box that you're designing, whether you're designing this for a speaker or whether you're designing this for a subwoofer, it doesn't matter. You need to check that. Um, I'm not concerned about this region here because if you're designing this type of subwoofer, you're probably going to put some type of high pass on and you can go to your filters tab and add those and see what it does to the frequency response if you want to. All right, now, once we figured out with the port um, where our cone excursion is, where our SPL is that we want it to, and uh, figured out whether it's going to work for our application, Right. So, I mean, if we're trying to get to 20 hertz with a four inch sub, this isn't going to work for our application. Um, even with the extended base shelf negative six decibels, it's just not going to work in the way that you want it to. Um, so, you know, you'd want to move to a different subwoofer. But let's just assume that this does work. Next thing you want to do is go to your vent. You can first go to um, rear port air velocity and take a look at that. So we've set the volume that we want. We've set our amplification power that we think we will be giving it. Now we're going to look at port tuning. So if we notice, um, this has absolutely no real port air resistance, right? So that's a good thing. And by all, you know, I mean, we, we would think that this is a perfect port for it. But if we take a look at the Cartesian, this is the reason why I picked the Cartesian. This is a four inch circular port. Um, and it says it needs to be 155 and a half inches long. That's ridiculous. Uh, on top of that, your first port resonance is 43 hertz. That's not going to happen. You want your first port resonance to be um, an octave above wherever you're crossing this over at. So in a subwoofer, a small subwoofer like this, you're probably using smaller speakers. So you're probably doing like 180 to 150 hertz. You need that to be closer to 360 hertz. Um, or 300 hertz, somewhere in that range. So anything below 360 or 300 is a no-go for first, first port resonance. And the higher, the better. So if that number is 500, 1,000, whatever, that's better. Not, not this. So we know a 4-inch port uh, isn't going to work for a lot of reasons. So we can change that. So let's change it to a 2-inch port. A 2-inch port looks pretty good. I mean, uh, once again, we're still below our first port. Uh, we're still below our... Um, our Rear port air velocity of 17 meters a second, but our port length is 40 inches long and our first port resonance is still 178 hertz. It's still a no-go on those things. You want to pay attention to those things. These are things that I notice that people don't pay attention to when they design uh, their box. And that first port resonance, you're going to hear that through your port. It's not going to sound good. Happens a lot. You can see it in DATS as well when you uh, take measurements. Um, just not something that you want to do. So let's change this to 1.5. Um, now we're a little above our 17 meters per second. We could maybe with a rounded over, you know, maybe we can do it. And keep in mind, it's a very small box and it still needs to be 22 inches. And now we're at 320 Hertz. So this is maybe the smallest you can, you can use, but once again, it's a one and a half inch port. That's 22 inches long and at 22 inches long with a 0.7, what 0 0.079 box. I mean, that's just I mean, it would be way outside the box. It just would not work. Uh, you could try a slot port, but I don't think you're going to find one that's going to work with that Cartesian. And this was the issue that I had with the Cartesian. It's a good driver, but really to use it uh, as a subwoofer at 50 watts of power, um, that's just not economical. So instead, you can use a passive radiator. Now, the passive radiator, you still want to check all the same things, right? Uh, you want to check your um, tuning frequency. This one actually has some filters on there. Let me take that. That actually had a parametric EQ on there. So you want to check your box size, which is a 1.3 cubic foot box, very small. Uh, you want to check your passive radiator. This, for some odd reason, I have four. Oh, you know what? That's because I have two drivers on here. So I have two drivers and four passive radiators. So that's because I was, I was considering putting passive radiators with 
this particular driver. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look at SPL. Uh, this SPL is going to be louder because there's two of them. So keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to look at maximum power. We're going to be looking all of those things that we've already looked at. Now, I know that those aren't going to be issues, right? I already know cone excursion is not an issue. Having said that, if you add something like a filter, always pay attention to cone excursion again. Because look, once I add this filter, look what happens to the cone excursion. It can't take as much power as it was before. So we would then want to go and adjust our power again and then check our SPL again to make sure it still gives us the SPL that we want along with the power handling that we want. In this particular case, it's not very bad. Um, that's probably going to be maybe one to three decibel difference. So, you know, it's, it's not going to be a big issue there. Um, after we've done that, there's another thing we do want to check, which is the cone excursion of the passive radiator. This is really important. So as you can see, like with four passive radiators, the cone excursion of the passive radiator is fine. We're not passing our X max line, which is red. If we were, it would look something like this. Let's just change this to one passive radiator. And you can see your passive radiator has now crossed over this threshold and it's no longer good. But passive radiator, the only thing you want to add to that is instead of rear port air velocity, you're going to want to go to cone excursion of the PR. See, this is all, this, these three right here have to do with passive radiators. Anytime you're uh, checking out a passive radiator, you can look at these. The most important one for box design um, in regards to keeping everything safe is the passive radiator cone excursion. So that's another thing to look at because that once again is going to limit your output. If you pass that passive, passive radiator cone excursion, you need to go with a bigger passive radiator. Um, that's pretty much the easiest thing to do. Now, closed box. Obviously, it's not going to show anything on cone excursion passive radiator, right? Because there is no passive radiator. Uh, closed box is very similar. We're once again going to have the box size. Uh, we don't need to worry about filters unless we're going to EQ it. If you're going to EQ it, add your filters and then take a look at what this looks like. This particular driver should take about 800 watts, I believe. I think this is the MX-15. And what we'll do is we'll go to SPL. Now, advanced tab, SPL graph is XMAX limited. So we can see that this does take uh, all 800 watts. Now, this is a bigger driver. So we're going to assume that we're going to be closer to 10 feet away versus, you know, the normal one meter away. So at 10 feet away, what is our SPL or maximum SPL? We're at 106 decibels. Yeah, that's going to be good enough for you. <laughs> I mean, if 106 decibels isn't good enough for you, I don't know what to tell you, but uh, that's, that's going to be great. Now you could obviously, you know, put this at 15 feet or whatever. And if you feel like it's not enough. If like 102 decibels or 103 decibels is not enough at 15 feet away, you know, either go with a different subwoofer or in this particular case, I would tell you to just add a second subwoofer because, you know, that's what you want to pay attention to. Now, this listening space only has to do with SPL. It's not going to affect any of the other things that we're looking at. So now we can go to cone excursion. Once again, see, we don't have to worry about cone excursion until after 20 hertz. Now you're saying, well, now I do have to worry about cone excursion. Look, it's going past it at 20 hertz. What do I do? This is where uh, your subsonic filter on your amplifier makes a big difference. So if we add a subsonic filter, which typically is between 17 and 20 hertz, we're just going to do 20 hertz, um, and you're usually a second order. We'll just put that high pass on there, hit add. Ed, look, you now have no issues with that at all. Even if it was a first order, you're still not going to have any issues with it. It's definitely not going to be a fourth order. So, <laughs> well, unless, unless you're using DSP of some kind. So that is going to change your um, transfer function a little. So if you want to look at what that's going to do, you know, you can add that on there. Keep in mind, uh, there's not much you can really do about this. Uh, pretty much every amplifier has some sort of high pass built in that's for like a subwoofer or something like that to protect it. Uh, even those PA amplifiers that you see has it on there. So keep that in mind. Now, another thing that you can do, like if we take a look at cone excursion, we're going to take this filter off for a minute. Uh, if you adjust this box size, uh, you know, that's going to change your transfer function, but it's also going to change your cone excursion. Look at that, a one cubic foot box. Now we have no issues with the cone excursion. So if we go to transfer function magnitude, 
it changed that, but it also changed this. So if we now go, I don't know, say 2.3 cubic feet, we've changed a little, it was 2.6. And look at this, we no longer have problems with cone excursion. So in a sealed box, lowering that box size will help, or you know, shrinking that box size, I guess I should say, will help you with that cone excursion on the low end. And now our cone excursion doesn't pass X max until, what is this, uh, 10 hertz. You're not gonna be playing 10 hertz signal. You shouldn't be playing 10 hertz signal. I don't, unless you're just doing, I don't know, some type of test tone, there's really no 10 hertz signal. So your, your subwoofer should be completely safe at this point in time. So if you're concerned with it, you know, just make the box smaller. Once again, that will affect your frequency response and it will affect your F3. So at 2.3, our F3 is now at 40 Hertz. At 2.6, our F3 was at 39.46. Now in this particular case, it makes a lot of sense to just make the box a little bit smaller because it doesn't really extend the frequency at all. And it does help you protect your driver. So if your subsonic filter or something should fail, you don't have, to, you should not have to worry about it. Um, assuming that, you know, obviously this is correct. So guys, I hope that you learned a little bit about box design. I hope that that helps you. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see other videos like it, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so you get instant notification. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And I hope you guys have a great day. This is Toyd's DIY Audio, and I'm out.